Thank you. It's a great honor to be with you today, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to say a few words to you at your annual conference. Uh, you come here to help us try to do the Lord's work in the city of Satan, and I'm always grateful <laughs> for that. And it's an honor to accept your National Commander's Distinguished Public Service Award. I am deeply honored. And could I say uh, thanks for mentioning that I lost running for President of the United States? Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> After I lost, I slept like a baby. S sleep two hours, wake up and cry. Sleep two hours. <laughs> And thanks for not mentioning again the number of landings did not much match the number of takeoffs, but that's okay. <clears throat> uh, could I just tell you one brief story real quickly? Uh, not before I retired, I was at the, at the bar, at the club, and a guy standing next to me, a real old looking guy. In fact, he looked a lot like Charles here. Uh, and I noticed he was wearing one stripe on his sleeve. And uh, I said, and I said to him, I said, hey, how are you? He said, fine. I said, how long have you been in the Navy? He said, 30 years. And I said, you're still an ensign? You're never promoted? And he said, no. And I said, why? He said, I was at the first <clears throat> squadron at Guadalcanal early in World War II. Every single night, one Japanese airplane used to fly over our field, and the siren, we called him Washington Machine Charlie, the siren would go off, we'd have to get out of our, air, out of our beds, into our airplane, start the engine, and pretty soon the all-clear siren would go off because it was just Washington Machine Charlie. He said, so, he said, I got tired of it. He said, I wasn't getting any sleep, so I went out in the jungle and I caught this monkey, and I trained this monkey that when the siren went off, He'd come out of the jungle, get into my airplane, start the engine. As soon as the all-clear siren went off, he'd shut down the engine and go back in the jungle. It was wonderful. I was sleeping like a baby every night. He said, and then, but sure enough, one night, it wasn't washing machine Charlie. It was a real Japanese air raid. <clears throat> he said, I came out of my tent just in time to see that monkey taken off in my airplane. <laughs> uh, I said, well, I said, I can certainly see why you were not promoted. And he said, that's not what makes me mad. The monkey retired as an admiral last week. <laughs> Most admirals don't enjoy that joke. <laughs> I want to thank you, friends and comrades, and I did want to make one additional comment. As you know, there was recently an effort a brave effort in Yemen, and uh, we lost an airplane, we lost a brave American, and, and several wounded. Uh, all of us here, at one time or another, probably lost a comrade, and there's nothing worse than that. And sometimes missions succeed, and sometimes they don't succeed. But it doesn't have anything to do with the bravery and courage and sacrifice that those brave Americans made. And, 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 And it does not in any way, when we judge the mission, have any way of diminishing their courage. My friends, 55,000 names are in black granite not far from here. And because of a failure of leadership, because of a failure of leadership, a lot of those brave Americans were on missions that didn't succeed. Micromanagement from the basement of the White House. Many of us are all familiar with but we honor their sacrifice every single day of their lives. And to somehow equate whether a mission succeeds or, or not with their bravery is a, a failure to understand the courage and sacrifice. Because these brave Americans, when they're told to go, they go. And that's what America's all about. So, we're living in a very dangerous world, my friends. We're in probably the most dangerous world that we've been in in 70 years. We're seeing the breakdown of the new world order that was formed after World War II. After two of the bloodiest wars in history, the United States of America, thanks to the service and sacrifice of ourselves and our allies, there was a new world order. It was shaped around the rule of law. It was sh shaped around freedom of the press. It was shaped around freedom to elect our, our leaders. The, the fundamental principles of democracy and freedom that we imbued throughout the world. And of course, my, my genuine hero always will be Ronald Reagan, 
who won the Cold War in the words of Margaret Thatcher without firing a shot because he stood for what we believe in during the Cold War. He stood for supremacy. He stood for those people. When he said, tear down that wall, when he said, tear down that wall, that was a call for freedom. And after that wall came down, we heard from people, all, they said, we heard Ronald Reagan. We heard him on Voice of America. We heard him on Radio Free Europe. And they were so grateful. And they were grateful not because so much because of our military power, because that was essential, but they, they, they loved us for the message of freedom, of democracy, of human rights, of, of freedom from the slavery and the gulags of the then Soviet Union. And now, my friends, we're being tested again. We're being tested in, in, the, in the South China Sea, where the Chinese now are filling in islands that, that they have no business doing, gross violation of international law. We now have six million refugees out of Syria, 400,000 dead. We now have Vladimir Putin dismembering Ukraine, occupying Crimea. And, and today, as we speak, he will be testing this new administration. And so we are in very challenging times, and we're seeing, of course, the possible breakup of the European Union. Um, and by the way, we are seeing Russian interference in the French election and probably in the German election. If, if, if Vladimir Putin is able to destroy our ability to correctly affect, elect our leadership, he's destroying the fundamental of democracy. And that's, and that's why we have to... And that's why we have to stop this. There's a, new, there's a whole new area, area of competition, my friends, and it's called cyber war. Cyber war. Right now, today, there, there, there have been attacks on uh, some of our most important uh, capabilities. There have been attacks on our privacy. There have been attacks that, that continue, and it's a whole new area. And when I talk to Admiral Rogers, who comes before our committee, he's the head of Cyber Command, he says, we're not ahead. It's a lot easier to attack than to defend. And so we've got to address this whole issue of attacks on everything that we hold dear, our privacy, our secrets, our, our, our capabilities. And that's an area that I know that you, you are concerned with. So we are, we are now in an era where there's more strains on that coalition, that new world order that was formed at the end of World War II, the and that was won at the sacrifice of so many brave Americans, so many. They're, we don't know where they all are, but we know they lie in islands in the Pacific. We know they lie in battle, quiet battlefields in Europe, but we, they, at great cost, and now we have a challenge that we have to meet. Now, I want to talk to you a couple of more issues. One, PTSD. My friends, um, PTSD is an issue. Every day as we speak, a veteran is committing suicide, more than one. And we passed a bill called the Clay Hunt uh, Act, which was named after the son, Clay Hunt Suicide Prevention for American Veterans Act, named after the, a brave young man named Clay Hunt who committed suicide in March 2011. Um, and so, We've had problems with addressing this issue. We have an obligation to identify, resource, and make available effective forms of treatment to help eliminate veteran suicide. We must eliminate veteran suicide. We owe that to every one of our veterans. I'm proud that the VA, working closely with my office, has turned to Arizona to become a national model for addressing the crisis, has home to the Arizona Clay Hunt Mental Health Pilot Program. And by the way, the new Secretary of the VA, Dr. Shulkin, has committed to making this one of his highest priorities. One other, what I want to talk to you, I'm, I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed that in Phoenix, Arizona, the scandal began. Uh, in the Phoenix VA, 50 veterans, as you know, who were on a non-existent waiting list, died. Veterans need the American Legion today more than at any time in ever. We need you. 
We passed, we passed legislation's Veterans Access Choice and Accountability Act, which President Obama signed into law. The legislation created the Veterans Choice Program. I know there's some, some controversy about that, but let me just say, I believe that the VA does the best job of anybody on PTSD, traumatic brain injury, uh, other prostheses, and others. But there's also medical care that veterans need, and they need it immediately. They don't. They don't have. To, they shouldn't have to wait on a, on a waiting list. People who are on Medicare, my friends, they're not on a waiting list. They just go out to a health care provider and get that health care. So what I want our veterans to be able to do is when they need the specialized care that only the VA can provide, we should have, make sure they have that. But if they have a routine health care need, they ought to just go ahead and be able to call up and make an appointment and see a doctor, just like people on Medicare do. I want our veterans to have immediate care whether it's at the VA or whether it's another health care provider. No one should be on a waiting list for days and weeks or months. No one. So, so, so I will hope that, that uh, at one time we had 15,000 veterans stand in Phoenix standing in line for care, including dozens, as I mentioned, who died. We can't do that. We can't do that to our veterans. So. Um, we live in interesting and challenging times. I am honored to be here with you today, as I am always. Those who I love most and know best are those that I had the great honor that was just mentioned to, serving in a hotel far away from here. And those, and those people are those who I had the great honor and privilege of knowing and loving. Some of them have left. Some of our fellow Vietnam veterans have left us. But I am the person I am today if there's any small measure of success that I've achieved, it's because of the comradeship and the love and struggle that we get waged together, my friends and fellow POWs, that we were proud to come home with honor, and I'm honored to be with you today. Thank you.